In the X-Men series, N. Shabanur is the oldest mutant on Earth. Having lived for thousands of years, he ruled over the entire Egypt and was worshipped by the oppressed people. No one knows exactly how long N. Shabanur has lived. But every hundred years, a resurrection ritual is held. N. Shabanur commands four guardians to find a new body for him. One with regenerative abilities. N. Shabanur possesses hundreds of powers. As each time his consciousness transfers, the abilities accumulate. The runes are activated by sunlight and the energy is channeled through the patterns to the transference device. N. Shabanur's consciousness swiftly transfers to the new body. However, at that moment, the oppressed people rise up and attempt to overthrow the tyrant. A traitor within the enemy's ranks cooperates to close the gates. Although the guardians easily eliminate these individuals, a boulder smashes through the load-bearing wall. The entire structure collapses, crushing the guardians one by one. N. Shabanur, in the midst of the transfer, reaches a critical moment. One guardian releases an energy shield before dying, enveloping N. Shabanur inside. Thus, he is forever buried underground. Time fast forwards to the year 1983. In a new timeline after altering the future, the future of mutants is completely reset. Eric Ranchell, now retired, lives a happy life with his wife and daughter. In his daily life, Eric Ranchell works as a steelworker. Scott Summers, who was not captured by Colonel William Stryker, suddenly manifests his powers at school. His brother, Alexander Alex Summers, happens to attend Xavier's school, so he decides to introduce his brother Scott Summers to Charles Xavier. However, just as he enters, he collides with Jean Grey. Although the timeline has been reset, the two cannot escape their destined encounter. Charles Xavier urges Scott Summers to demonstrate his powers, and Scott Summers shoots out laser beams, splitting a tree in half, which impresses Jean Grey. But on that day, a group of followers who worship N. Shabanur as a deity discovers his tomb. Sunlight enters through the open hole, activating the runes, and energy quickly permeates through the patterns. The dormant mutant N. Shabanur awakens. N. Shabanur clenches his fist, and the surrounding rocks begin to stir. The entire cave collapses, and none of the followers present can escape. Once again, N. Shabanur emerges into the world, feeling utterly unfamiliar with everything around him. His attention is quickly drawn to the young Marola Monroe who can summon strong winds with a blink of her eyes. Sensing danger, she starts to flee. However, she is soon surrounded by a group of merchants. N. Shabaner follows closely and, without saying a word, raises his hand, instantly killing them all. N. Shabaner then uses his eyes to push one of the merchants against a wall. Shortly after, Arola Monroe takes N. Shabaner to her home. Now, N. Shabaner wants to know who rules the world and his method is to touch the television. By connecting to the satellite through the signal, he obtains all the information he desires. Quickly, he learns that humans dominate the Earth, which greatly displeases N. Shabaner. He decides to let mutants regain control of the Earth. He reaches out his hand to greatly enhance Arolo Monroe's powers, making her the first follower of N. Shabaner. Subsequently, based on the information, they find the second mutant, Spiritual Butterfly. She can use telekinesis to create various weapons. N. Shabaner only needs a single glance. The telekinetic powers of Spiritual Butterfly are instantly amplified several times. Coupled with N. Shabaner's persuasive language, Spiritual Butterfly also becomes a follower. Next, they find the third mutant, Warren Kenneth Worthington III, but his wings are severely damaged. In a competition, Kurt Wagner defeats him using teleportation, resulting in his current appearance. However, this is no challenge for N. Shabaner. His body undergoes a transformation, and the injured wings mutate. In their place, a pair of brand new metallic wings emerges. Warren Kenneth Worthington III, now filled with power, effortlessly exudes the image of a hero. The next step is to find Eric Ranchell and make him a follower. This steelworker is no ordinary person. He is the renowned Eric Ranchell. While at work, when a ladle of molten iron overturns, endangering the lives of his colleagues, Eric Ranchell extends his hand and saves them. His superhuman abilities are revealed, and his co-workers immediately report what they witnessed. Eric Ranchell hurriedly returns home, intending to leave with his wife and daughter. However, his wife discovers their daughter is missing from the room. The two start searching around and witness an unfortunate scene. A group of police officers apprehends his daughter. Their aim is to make Eric Ranchell willingly surrender himself. They discover that Eric Ranchell is a level 4 mutant at the pinnacle. Eric Ranchell voluntarily surrenders, exchanging himself for his daughter's safety. However, his daughter doesn't want her father to be taken away. In her distress, 
his daughter awakens her own superhuman abilities. Numerous birds launch an attack, attempting to prevent these people from taking away her father. In the chaos, a soldier accidentally releases an arrow that strikes Eric Ranchell's wife and daughter. Eric Ranchell hastily embraces them both. Soon, there are no signs of life from his wife and daughter. In order to lead a normal life with his wife and daughter, Eric Ranchell has always chosen to endure and remain virtuous. At this moment, Eric Ranchell is filled with sadness and despair. He removes the necklace from his daughter's hand and flicks it away. After dealing with everyone, a vengeful Eric Ranchell arrives at the steel mill, ready to confront the co-worker who betrayed him. Just then, N. Shabiner teleports behind Eric Ranchell. Eric Rancher simply rolled his eyes and made them all sink into the cement. N. Shabiner then takes Eric Ranchell to the place where his parents were killed triggering painful memories within him. Eric Ranchell's heart undergoes a complete and twisted transformation, and his powers become exactly what Enshabiner needs. With the significant enhancement of his powers from Enshabiner, the underground metals begin to surge. He effortlessly controls all the metals within a radius of hundreds of miles. Eric Ranchell unleashes his pent-up hatred, reducing buildings to rubble with his terrifying power. At this moment, Eric Ranchell's friend, Raven Darkholm, arrives at the academy. She informs Charles Xavier that Eric Ranchell's wife and daughter tragically died, and there are many bodies at the scene. Worried that Eric Ranchell will become an enemy of everyone's attention, she requests Charles Xavier to use his psychic powers to locate Eric Ranchell. Charles Xavier then equips himself with a cerebral amplification device. The entire human and mutant population appears before him one by one. After a quick selection process, they quickly connect with Eric Ranchell. Charles Xavier hopes that he can approach the situation rationally and stop the indiscriminate killing. However, Eric Ranchell's heart is consumed by hatred and refuses to listen to reason. Just then, N. Shabiner notices something amiss. And Charles Xavier also senses the presence of N. Shabiner. N. Shabiner directly rolls his eyes and invades Charles Xavier's mental world. By controlling Charles Xavier's consciousness, N. Shabiner manages to connect with every person in the world. And Charles Xavier's abilities are precisely what N. Shabiner needs to reincarnate. Soon, he uses his influence to take control of soldiers, directly activating the nuclear missile launch switches. Without these weapons, there will be no more threats to him. This shocking turn of events leaves Stan Lee dumbfounded. Soon, all these weapons are thrown into space. Charles Xavier forcefully regains his consciousness and orders Alexander Alex Summers to destroy the cerebral amplification device. With Alexander Alex Summers' efforts, the laboratory is quickly destroyed. Charles Xavier then faints, but a new situation arises. N. Shabiner teleports to the location and effortlessly captures Charles Xavier with a wave of his hand. Upon witnessing this, Alexander Alex Summers launches an attack, but N. Shabiner escapes in time, accidentally hitting the energy source of the academy. It triggers a massive explosion. At this moment, everything around freezes. Surely everyone is very familiar with him. This is the fastest man I have ever seen. That's how Pietro Maximoff uses his super speed abilities. Rescue operations unfolded in a room on the verge of exploding, even allowing enough time for someone to finish their hairstyle before taking them away. Due to the large number of people, he tore down the curtains and hung them on a tree. Then he threw a group of people out of the window. Even the pets that were eating were treated the same way. At the last moment, Pietro Maximov caught two people and kicked the table out, safely rescuing everyone. Only Alexander Alex Summers, who was closest to the explosion, sacrificed himself on the spot. At that moment, N. Shabiner waved his hand towards the city. All buildings rapidly decomposed and transformed into a new substance. A magnificent ceremonial hall stood tall on the ground. Soon after, a helmet materialized and was handed over to Eric Ranchell. After all, he was an important figure in world destruction, and N. Shabiner's purpose in building the hall was to transfer his consciousness to Charles Xavier. If successful, he could use psychic control over the entire human race. At this moment, Eric Ranchell also began unleashing his superpowers, forming countless electromagnetic nets. Under Eric Ranchell's control, all metallic objects started gathering. Not only that, even the depths of the sea began to crumble. It wouldn't take long for the existing human civilization to become history. At this time, Raven Darkholm, Jean Grey, Scott Summers, Jean Grey, Kurt Wagner, Pietro Maximov, they arrived near the ceremonial hall in a fighter jet. Seeing such a scene, the ship couldn't get close at all. At this crucial moment, Kurt Wagner arrived just in time. He carried Charles Xavier and escaped back to the fighter jet. The rescue was successful, but not without getting their hair pulled. At this moment, 
and Shabaner sensed that something was wrong, he looked to the neighboring bed and heard no angry roar. Warren Kenneth Worthington III caught up with the escaping fighter jet with his spiritual butterfly. Jean Grey immediately pulled the control lever and dove down. Warren Kenneth Worthington III jumped in at just the right moment. The others grabbed Kurt Wagner and teleported, successfully escaping before the plane crashed. The spiritual butterfly sensed the danger and detached from the aircraft. Meanwhile, Warren Kenneth Worthington III sacrificed himself along with the plane. At this moment, N. Shabaner caught up, searching for Charles Xavier. Pietro Maximov, known as the fastest, came face to face with N. Shabaner. He unleashed a brutal attack on N. Shabaner, but N. Shabaner was not to be trifled with. His eyes quickly analyzed Pietro Maximov's movements. With a flicker of his eyes, Mug restrained Pietro Maximov rendering him immobile, and then his leg was kicked off. Raven Darkholm transformed into the appearance of a spiritual butterfly and approached. Seizing the opportunity, she launched a sudden attack on Enshabaner, however, the wounds instantly healed. Then, Enshabaner grabbed Raven Darkholm in his hands, threatening Charles Xavier to appear. Raven Darkholm was on the verge of being defeated. This scene deeply affected Eric Ranchel and Arola Monroe, who were nearby. Suddenly, Charles Xavier thought of a way, although the rebirth ritual had failed. His consciousness was still tightly connected to Enshabaner's consciousness. So, Charles Xavier entered Enshabaner's mind, intending to defeat him with his psychic powers, but he underestimated Enshabaner's mental strength. Soon, Charles Xavier found himself unable to breathe under the overpowering force of Enshabaner. Enshabaner threw him several meters away with great force. In reality, Enshabaner approached Charles Xavier, and no one could stop him. Suddenly, two massive steel plates slammed heavily into the ground, blocking his path. It was Eric Ranchel who suddenly realized what he needed to do. Eric Ranchel reached out and manipulated a large amount of steel, relentlessly attacking Enshabaner. Scott Summers joined the battle as well, but the ongoing battle outside had no impact on the spiritual realm. As Charles Xavier's consciousness was being destroyed, Jean Grey unexpectedly entered in Shabaner's spiritual realm. Charles Xavier wasn't surprised by this and told her to let go and do what she needed to do. Jean Grey's abilities had always been suppressed by Charles Xavier. At that moment, Jean Grey unleashed her full power, and Shabaner's consciousness was instantly destroyed, and even the armor on his body turned into fragments. Eric Ranchel seized the opportunity to deliver a powerful blow while Scott Summers fired his optic blasts to attack. Seeing the unfavorable situation, N. Shabaner attempted to teleport and escape, but suddenly, the power of lightning descended. Arola Monroe timely intervened and cut off N. Shabaner's escape route. Finally, with Jean Grey's continuous output, N. Shabaner was vanquished. Filled with helplessness and resentment, the crisis was resolved, and the world returned to peace. In the end, Jean Grey and Eric Ranchel used their control abilities to rebuild the Xavier's school for gifted youngsters. Due to different perspectives, Eric Ranchel eventually decided to leave and live the life he desired. In this new timeline, Wolverine also existed. After Colonel William Stryker fished Wolverine out of the river, he was unable to escape the transformation performed with adamantium. Eventually, Wolverine escaped from the laboratory. Please subscribe to my channel. Share different movies and videos every day.